Welcome live here to Racing Hotspot Weekend Roundup. I am your host, Devin Postlesny. Dave Postlesny will join us in a little bit. Um, it's September 7th, which means it's September Race Week 2014 Countdown Week. Um, September 14th is when ca September or September 13th is when Race Week begins for us here at Racing Hotspot. We've been doing a lot of things prepping up for that, as you know. We had we have a stage now, and I was working on that earlier today. Um, and yeah, so let's get right into things. Take a look at our show lineup. We have Motorsports in 16, and we're going to talk about Formula One. We're going to have the Racing Hot Spot September Race Week 2014 preview. Then we're going to take a break. On the other side of the break, we're going to have Dave Poslesny with, and we're going to talk about NASCAR. We're going to also talk about the Chase Recap, a Chase Grid. It was set this week. The RH Point Championship and the final lap. So let's get right into things. Motorsports in 60. 60 seconds starts now. Brian Stev, the Virginia 529 College Savings 250 at Richmond on Saturday night. Oh, uh, no, Friday night. It's a top five. Finishing fifth was Brian Scott, Ryan Blaney finished 4th, Kevin Harvick finished 3rd, Chase Elliott finished 2nd, and Kyle Busch swept that race, leading every single lap of the race. All 250. 30 seconds left on the board. So, yeah. <laughs> Fifteen seconds. Now there's a possibility that we might not have our Formula One analyst Peter along with us tonight um, because of timing. So I'm going to go over the top five for the Formula One race and then we'll go to him if it is there. If not, then we'll move on. Formula One, they raced the Mazda, Monza Grand Prix earlier today. Here's your top five. Finishing fifth was Daniel Ricciardo. Valtteri Botas finished fourth, Felipe Massa finished third, Nico Rosberg finished second, and Lewis Hamilton won that race. All right, so because of time purposes, we did not have that, so sadly, we're going to have to move on. Um, so yeah. Um, now moving on to our race week preview 2014. Whew. I can't believe it starts this Saturday already. It's been a quick eight weeks. Um, let's take just a quick preview of what to expect. Um, it's the same basic logo as July, except it has September, and it has all the race logos on there. Anyways, um, racing hot spot weekend round up September 14th, which we're recapping all NASCAR, nothing else though. Um, and that's only because of scheduling, nobody else is racing that weekend. But next weekend, I'll, this... The table, me, that, you guys, camera, laptop, headset, possibly Dave, I'm not sure. We'll be at New Hampshire Motor Speedway recording September Racing Hotspot Weekend Roundup, September 14th, 2014 edition. Um, that's exciting. Um, so that is our kickoff. There is a possibility we might have Legends cars next Saturday, but I might be working. So that's a kind of like a 75-25 chance that it's actually going to happen. 75% saying no, 25% saying yes. We'll see. Well, you can make, us, make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Facebook and Twitter will have all your updates coming into race week. But next weekend, definitely we're having weekend roundup from the track. Then, Monday, Tuesday, we kind of sit and we're quiet. Nothing happening, nothing happening. People coming in, track filling up, NASCAR starting to roll in. Wednesday, nothing really, but we'll bring the stage down to the track. You'll have, I'll make sure to keep you guys in loop with that. Um, Thursday, everything ramps up. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Hall of Parade Thursday night. We'll have coverage of that, as always. Then we also have... Um, WOKQ Fan Fest that night. I'm not sure what exactly what we're going to do yet. We might have coverage of it. We might not. Not sure. We'll see. Um, then, Friday, September 19th. We're going to have two things for you, but in one show. 
Why you sing hot spot trackside edition will be Friday night. Now we're gonna recap. Cup Series qualifying, we're also going to possibly have two special interviews for you. Um, it's looking like we are going to have those interviews for you, but there's there's probably like a 2% chance it may not. But I'm pretty sure we're having them. Um, it's almost 100% defi definite we are. Um, but on Trackside Edition, we're going to recap qualifying, which we will have full coverage for you. On qualifying, we plan to at least, unless something else happens. But NASCAR knock, NASCAR Spring Cup Series knockout qualifying for the Cup Series will have coverage of like we did last July with the single runs. Well, I wasn't going to cover any qualifying this year, but then we went to knockout qualifying in July, and I was like, holy cow, this thing's sweet. So we decided in September we're going to. So in trackside, we're going to have that, plus we're going to have... A special segment for POWMIA. Prisoner of War missing in action. Now, on September 19th, Friday, is POWMIA recognition, recognition Day? Recognition? It's basically the day where we recognize POWMIA. And Racing Hotspot is now with the uh, we now are Racing Hotspot. Um, Racing Hotspot has a program going, Racing Hotspot POW MIA Awareness. So that Friday, at races, as you guys know, we fly the Racing Hotspot flag. Well, that Friday, the fl Racing Hotspot flag comes down and the POW MIA flag goes up. Um, we have all the right rules, so we're able to fly that as long as you guys know if we actually want to fly with other flags it has to be the United States then the state flag and at the POW MIA or just the POW MIA flag alone which is what we're going to do so that is going to be a segment in trackside edition on that Friday night because it is that um, that day so after Friday we go to Saturday morning which will be an American Canadian Tour Bond Auto Parts. No, hold on. It's the Bond Auto Parts ACT Invitational. It's Saturday night. But before that happens, we'll have a pre race show for you, which it's looking like it's going to be a great show. We're not going to give anything out right now, but it is looking like we're going to have a great sh pre race show for you. It's not just going to be me going, okay, it's 50 laps. Um, these cars are stock cars, uh, they have bumpers. No, we're going to have a packed show for you. So after the pre-race show, we'll have ACT, the Bond Auto Parts ACT Invitational um, coverage. Yep, Bond Auto Parts ACT Invitational coverage. That's 50 laps of racing on the one-mile oval. Now, Racing Hotspot is going to have full coverage of that. Now, what do I mean by that? It's going to be me commentating that race like we did in July with the k and Pro Series and the Modifieds race. So it's going to be great. Um, then we're going to have an ACT post-race slash half, the, half this show on Saturday night is going to be post-race. And half the show is just going to be a Saturday recap because the ACT race isn't the only thing happening on Saturday. The truck race and the Modified race is also happening. So we'll have full coverage of those two. Um... Then, on Sunday morning, we'll have a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series pre-race show. Nothing special. It'll just be probably Dave and I hashing it out about qualifying and who is fast in practice and what to expect. Um, and then, of course, we have the Cup Series race, which we will not actually have coverage of. We'll have um, highlights and stuff, but we won't um, record it in full because that's 300 laps and... I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm. My ability's there yet. But after that, we'll have a show on Sunday night. Now that's half the post race show and half a Sunday recap show. So really, it's just a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series post race show. But yeah, so make sure to like us on Facebook because this next week is going to be packed with sneak previews. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, tomorrow, we'll give you a preview to what's going on 
Tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow, then Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. We'll give you every day between... At some point during the day, there'll be a posting up on Facebook saying, Hey, here's your sneak preview for today. Da 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 is going to happen on this day. Or da 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 is going to happen on this day. Or something like that. Now, there are some really big things happening race weekend. So, but we kind of want to keep those a definite secret because those are the types of things that we want to have a secret up until we release them. So, like I said, those special interviews, don't get me wrong, probably by this Wednesday, we're going to know definitely they're going to happen. So, but we're not going to tell you about them until tracks out on Friday night. Now, I know some of you viewers are going, you're mean. Sorry. But it builds up suspense and it makes you, the viewers, come back to us to find out. Business. Okay. So that's going to bring us to our first break. On the other side of this break, we're going to have NASCAR. The NASCAR, the top five, we're going to go over the chase. We're going to go over the... Dave and I are going to talk in depth into the chase. Then we're going to come back. Then we're going to go to the points championship, which is also going to be in depth because we're starting our first ever chase in the points championship, which, holy cow, did things change. Let's put it that way. Um, then we'll have your final lap, and that will be this week's show. So until we see each other on the other side of this break, don't click that mouse. We'll be right back. Welcome back live here to Racing Hotspot Weekend Roundup. I am now alongside Dave Poslesny. Dave, welcome to the show. Um, how are you doing today? Sure, of our technical difficulties, okay. All right. So let's go. Let's look at the top five real quick here. Um, there we go. The Federated Auto Parts 400 was raced last night at Richmond. Here's the top five. Finishing fifth was Kevin Harvick. Jamie McMurray finished fourth. Clint Boyer finished third. Jeff Gordon finished second. And Brad Keselowski won the race, becoming the only driver this season winning four races this year. So, so far. What? So far. So far, yep. Yeah. Um, so we'll get to the chase in a minute. So let's just re um, talk about the races, Nationwide and Cup. We'll start with Nationwide. You had a very three notes, I believe. Simple notes. Yep. Would you like me to read them? Um, sure. Well, first, was congratulations to Kyle Busch, as usual. Um, and all honesty, it, as I was pointing out to who I'm staying with right now, really, every time the guy's in it, he just thinks it up. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a Kyle Busch fan, but... At some point in time, it's got to give. I mean, I can understand how we've got a unit, but that's just, it's not even fair. All, what, 250? 250, Every yes. Every single lap. Think about how difficult that is to do when it comes to pitting all the above. you got to do everything just right to lead every lap. I'm not sure how many, time, how many times it's been done, but probably not that many. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like I said again, the cup guys, they, they always stink it up. Um, and yeah, congratulations on every lap, Kyle. That's pretty much it. That was all my notes. <laughs> all right. So, wow, I'm huge. <laughs> um, then to your cup notes, which I can't bring up because we got to leave you on the screen, but just go through those real quick with us. Well, with the cup? Mm hmm. I just want to say that I thought that the uh, opening music was actually the opening music, whoever thought of that. 
It was uh, in the air tonight, sang by a female, but originally written by Phil Collins. Perfect song for the situation. Unfortunately, the race just didn't turn out to really be as exciting as I think everybody was expecting. You, I thought it was going to be a crash fest to try and get you know try to get in there and be the guy to win that race to cut off everybody else and get your spot in the chase. But it didn't turn out that way. They were actually all pretty mellow. Mm -hmm. I would have anticipated anybody in the chase already to have just backed off. They really didn't. They were riding it. Well, obviously, one of them won it. Yeah. You know, it was, I was like, it was very different than what I was expecting. It was a good race, don't get me wrong, but it was just very different. Mm -hmm. um, as, I, as I wrote in the note, these drivers are being really, really careful. This has got to change, or I actually typed, this will change in, by, in the last 20 laps. It didn't. <laughs> it did. surprising. Didn't. It got a little busier, but not like I think anybody was expecting. I think everybody was expecting this to be an absolutely crazy race. And it turned out to be one of the most mellow in the last five or six races. Yeah. Very easy going, not a whole lot going on, whole lot of green flag, uh, yeah, green flag uh, racing. I mean, other than the delinquent that climbed to the fence. Did you hear anything more about that? Just that the guy was arrested on being drunk and disorderly conduct. Well, just do it. <laughs> you pretty much have to be. Trust me, take it from an expert. You <laughs> uh, to climb the fence while those cars are going by. Especially at Richmond, they move faster at Richmond than they do at Loudoun. Yeah. Think about that. You really want to climb that fence? That's not the smallest move I've ever heard. No. Nope. But um, I just figured automatically they would have blamed it on Clint Boyer or, uh, <laughs> or uh, what you might call it, uh, the entire wall trip team. Because you know how Clint Boyer needed to make it in? Yeah. I would have automatically just assumed they'd, they'd blame it on him or the guy would have yelled, Michael Waltrip made me do it! <laughs> he paid me five grand. <laughs> my phone just pooped out, or my notes just did. Should I say? There we go. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I mean, it was it was a relatively good race. Yeah, it's you know, I was just as I as I said in my notes, I was just about to say that this is not a very eventful race. It was kind of boring until all of a sudden we go to caution because some guys on the fence. <laughs> that that's I think that's the first time I've ever actually heard or seen that. And does history show anybody, uh, have they ever had to throw a caution for somebody climbing the fence before? No, but they have had in the past people running across the guardrails under like a red flag or something. Matt Kenseth in Watkins Glen, I think it was 2008 or something like that, a fan jumped the um, guardrail to get an autograph. Yes, but yeah, but they were stopped though. Yeah. Yeah, well... When I, when I used to go to Watkins Glen, Devin, and, and if our cameraman was there, he can verify this. If they did go to a red flag and the call was parked in front of you, you could just climb over the blue rail, in which, by the way, it was really no fall in, I don't know, 30, 36 inches. Oh, even as a kid, you can climb right over it and run over to the driver, and they were happy to sign. And nobody ran and grabbed you or anything. It was, it was perfectly okay. Now, granted, safety has determined that that's a bad idea, and I do agree with it, but, you know, that incident in Watkins Glen, that was, that was not a big deal. This one, that guy was a little nuts, because he had cars, you know, doing 170 miles an hour below him, that, that is pretty crazy. Hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes, it's so small, unfortunately. Um, uh, <laughs> still working on this technology thing, we'll get it done. <laughs> uh, maybe a new second screen. Or something that goes off of my phone. I'm sure it can. There's got to be some kind of Bluetooth device or some. You just have to buy it for me, that's all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're working now, aren't you? Yeah. But. Oh, did you notice, by the way? Yeah, we're wearing the same color. Yeah, I grabbed it right before I uh, came down. Mom had it, or your grandmother. Um, anyway, on the, on the Cup Series, the only other thing I really had to say was congratulations on a well-earned full win for Brad Keselowski because it was definitely well-earned. Mm -hmm. uh, Biff got in, just lucky. <laughs> but then again, like I said, it didn't appear that anybody really wanted to go out of their way to make an effort to grab that spot. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I saw a Ryan Newman got in, but I didn't see that. Was he locked in? No, he got in on points. 
Uh, he had so, to, he was what just before Bill? I think so. I think he just had to finish eighteenth or better. Better. I don't. I don't believe. I don't remember hearing anything about that on the pre-race. But that's why I was kind of thrown. I saw like that he was in there. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. Uh, I know he needs sixteen, right? Yeah. And that's another thing. And that's a whole different subject. It is not in my notes. So we can get rid of these at this point. The elimination. Yes. Is it the final four races, or is it all ten? It's because when we were showing it post race yesterday, it was like it's just the final four races. No, it's it is it dwindles down throughout the ten. So the first three, Chicago, New Hampshire, Dover, is called the contender or challenger round, which knock off. How many drivers per race does it knock off? It will, after Dover, the field of 16 will go down to 12. Oh, wow. In one race? In three races. Three. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, so now I'm confused. So what, ha all right, so what happens next week? Okay, what happens is... What happens for our week at New Hampshire... Is anybody limited at all, or is it they just screw around with this until after Dover, and then they knock off four? I think what it is, is let's say Brad Keselowski, or no, let's say Jimmy Johnson, no, Matt Kenseth, since he won at Chicago last year. Yeah. He wins at Chicago this year. He automatically gets his spot into the next round. And then... It help me a whole lot. I know that in some way, shape, or form, they need to narrow it down. And the explanation the television gave yesterday was not a good explanation. Actually, it was, it was a terrible explanation because all they were showing was a total of four things and then home set. <laughs> so that's five races. But obviously, when you come down to homestead, you're down to four guys. Somebody's taking the championship. Yeah. And there is no points or nothing like that from what they were saying. It's everybody goes into Homestead totally even. Whoever has the best position is your new champion. Yeah, and the way it's... Win, you just got to be better than everybody else. Yeah, and the way they gonna way it's going to go is if you win in, in the round... If you win in a round, you advance to the next. But if nobody... Let's say that we have three different winners in the next three weeks that aren't in the chase. Mm -hmm. Then they go by points. Okay. So if if let's say we have uh, one of the chase guys wins in Chicago and New Hampshire and Dover, right? The other um, ten, no, eleven, no. Nine. Exactly. The other nine will be filled by points. And then... Who, who is our current main main announcer? I know Donald Waltrip is, is done for the year. Yes. Um, who, who do we got? Who do we got that we can challenge to seriously try to explain this? Because I think we should. I think we should challenge them on TV to explain exactly what's going to happen with the next time races because it is confusing what they showed on like i said post race made no sense at all to me it looked like we were going to do six races or i'm sorry five races and then it mattered well it is anybody going to be eliminated in the next race that's what i want to know no what happens is is Chicago, New Hampshire, Dover are yeah. all races that you can advance to the next round. After Dover, people get eliminated. Okay. Then after... Oh, hold on. I think I have it on my iPod. Don't want to leave you on... Get you off the screen. Give me a second. Then after... Then after Dover... Where, where'd you go? Right, yeah. What? Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to ask. Okay. 
So, the challenger round is Chicago, New Hampshire, Dover. After Dover, four people are eliminated. And going into Kansas, we'll have 12 people, 12 drivers racing. Right? Okay. In Kansas, Charlotte, Talladega is the contender round. After Talladega, four more people are eliminated. Oh, all right. So it's basically broken down a few races per round? Yeah. Okay, they did not say that. They did not explain it that way at all. Did I'm... you catch the after race? What? Did you catch post race? A little bit. I was working on our own post race. Well, they were basically only showing five parameters of how it would be. And first one was 16, second one was 12. Basically, it, it, it knock it down. It's basically what you were saying, but they didn't explain how it was going to get broken down. Yeah, and if you win in, a, like, let's say somebody wins in the challenger round. Yep. He auto they automatically advance to the contender round. Okay. So since we'll have three races in the challenger round, if we have three different winners, let's say Kansas wins at Chicago, Kozlowski wins at our track, and Hamlin wins at Dover, that would mean that nine spots would be then be filled by points. Okay, I got you. And then I can tell you, it, it, I, I hate to be the people that actually sit around and try to figure all this out. Because <laughs> it's really got to be a bitch. Well, my language. Nope. Um, but then at Kansas, Kansas, Charlotte, Talladega, if you win in that round, <clears throat> which is the contender round, you'll then move on to the eliminator round, which is Martinsville, Texas, Phoenix. And that's going to knock it down to the final four. Yep, and then going into Homestead, if, let's say, all four Hendrick drivers are the top four, which, no offense to the Hendrick drivers, but I kind of wish they don't. It's not just the Hendrick drivers. Depending on where you, whoever finishes highest out of those four drivers will be your champion. Okay. What now, do you think the odds are of that happening, what you just said, all Hendrick? Really a long shot. Yeah, I'd say you can make some pretty good money on Vegas if you called it. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, no. Um, out of everybody that got in, I, I would, honestly, I would love to see the, the underdog, which I guess in this case is Greg Bethel. Love to see him just come back and take it. That would be amazing. <laughs> but beyond that, I, I, would, I would love to see, uh, well, obviously, Kyle Busch. Followed by Jeff Gordon. I'd like to see Jeff Gordon win it again, if he could. This way he matches up with his uh, protege, Jimmy Johnson. Mm hmm But I, my dad brought up something interesting last night. Um, he was like, what if all four of your drivers going into Homestead get in a wreck and they go to the garage? And I went, hmm, never thought about that. But then I thought, that then becomes a race against the teams. What do you mean? Okay, so let's say it's all 400 drivers going into the ch homestead, right? Okay. And on lap five, so-and-so up in front of them, they're all running together. They're all being teammates and running around each other. So-and-so in front of them hits the wall and collects all four of them. At what race? Homestead. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Good one, Roy. That, that's an interesting uh, possibility. I never even really would have thought of that. Yeah, and all four of the championship contenders get put in the garage. So, the way I explained it to him, and agree with or agree or disagree with me, that would become a race with the teams. Okay, come on, guys, we got to get our car out before the others. Right, because there's still points. Yeah, exactly, and also... I mean, if you accumulate points, you need to be on the track, dead or not. As long as you're going around and around, you're still making up points and better points than the teams that are not going around and around. 
Yeah, and yeah, the all about getting that car on the track and NASCAR not black legging it. Yeah, and then at the end of the race, if let's say you're 50 laps down and your teammate behind you is 55, and then 60, and then 65, you're going to finish ahead of them, making you the champion, even if you have to pull out the car's fenders into victory lane. This is all we have left. No, 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 I understand that. That makes sense. Uh, how, did, uh, how did your dad take that? He went, okay, we'll see. Well, you know what, though? Ultimately, it's racing. That is a possibility. One of the things that I love about racing is there's almost always a possibility. There's like things that can happen that you just never anticipate. Yeah. Again, like some jazz climbing the fence and cropping the field up. You know, and here you got a guy who's got a nice, good lead, and then some jerk in the audience has to climb a fence and ruin that whole lead ball. Hey. Granted, when he went back, it's a call. It'd be great. Could you blame him, though? He wanted a better seat. Yeah, I could blame him. That was just stupid. <laughs> I, I would not recommend that to any of our fans. I wouldn't either. Um, by the way, somebody we could ask to try to explain the chase a little bit better might be Larry McReynolds or Mike Joy. Wink, wink. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and, uh, and have access to that. That's going to be pretty awesome. Um... But moving on now to the... I gotta like write some stuff down because I'm really not even sure what I I'm probably just gonna sit there with my jaw drop going. <laughs> Alright. Um am I really on stage interviewing him? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So um looking ahead it's your job, so I'm just gonna sit there quietly. You're the cameraman. Yeah. That's what we arranged you to be. <laughs> that works. By the way, sorry about the <laughs> screaming behind the camera. My mom just let the dogs in and one of the dogs came right back at her. Um, <laughs> sweet dogs. So now... I didn't hear any of it. What? I didn't hear any of it. Very, very lightly. Well, the camera's right there. So they were literally right behind it. Um, to now move on to your Chase, NASCAR Chase grid, we'll get in a little bit more in de e detail with the Chase grid. So, yeah, let's go to the Chase grid now. Editing, editing, okay. So, now to look at the current Chase grid standings. Um, it goes like this, Brad Keselowski's on top, Jeff Gordon's in second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in fourth. Jimmy Johnson's in... Well, hold on, actually. Hold on a minute. Let's just make sure that these are accurate, because I realized that I'm going off yeah, of... Yeah, good idea. Yeah, just to make sure. All right. Hold on. Wait for NASCAR.com to come up. I'm looking over wondering what's going on with them, but they haven't got started yet. <laughs> oh, your fault. Hey, don't, don't get mad at me. I was working on our stage. Yeah, that's right. That's what you were painting? Yep. I was painting a bathroom, a huge one. Hey. Now I'm not impressed. I had, <laughs> I had to paint the bottom of a stage that is 192 square feet, and it's not just a simple flat board, it's literally with the posts in between for support, and I had to go in and out, and had to make every square inch of wood was sealed. This way we don't break through when we're walking on it, or putting in the table on it at race weekend. <laughs> You've been to your Aunt Kim's house, you know what I'm up against. No, I, I have a feeling. Um, so now to look... Archways, angles, stupid lines, tape by the millions of feet, blah, blah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So now to look at the chase standings. These are the actual official ones from NASCAR.com. Brad Keselowski's in first. Jeff Gordon's in second. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s in third. Jimmy Johnson's in fourth. Joey Logano's in fifth. Kevin Harvick is in sixth. Carl Edwards is in 7th, Kyle Busch is in 8th, 
Denny Hamlin is 9th, Kurt Busch is 10th, Casey Kane's 11th, Eric Amarillo is 12th, AJ Allmendinger is 13th, Matt Kenseth is 14th, Greg Biffle is 15th, and Ryan Newman is 16th. So that's the standings. And the three drivers that got in on points, actually the two drivers that got in on points last night were Kislavs, um, no, Greg Biffle and Ryan Newman. Um, so, looks like a great, a great field of drivers to go into this chase with. Yeah, it does look like it's going to be fun. But then again, I really thought Richmond was going to be more exciting than it was. And it just didn't pan out. I'm still trying to figure that out. I would have thought more, more guys would have taken a shot at it. But I think they had them... I guess it, like, uh, the media had them so narrowed down that it seemed like it was like only like two or three... Guys, and I don't know what Clint Boyer would have had to do. I'm guessing win would have been his only chance. Basically. Um, right. Hence the guy climbing up the fence, Michael Walter Bridge. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I'm not claiming that. It's just a disclosure. Just a joke. Yeah, and I don't think Michael Walter had time to pay anybody. He's putting on his dancing shoes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be funny, too. I don't even understand how they're going to work with that guy. Um, but I saw the announcement for it. You're talking about the the dancing thing. Yep. Yeah, I saw the announcement for it. I had a I heard a race car driver, but I was in another room and I came running out. I had to rewind. I go who? And I'm thinking like some Formula One driver, you know, like some French guy or you know something that might actually be able to dance. Uh, no, Michael Waltrip. I'm going really. Oh my God, good luck with that. The guy's a giant clown. What, what, that's what he does. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, he's a good driver, but he's not really a driver anymore. He's more or less a clown. <laughs> um, so, Chase Grid, I think, as you keep saying, that Richmond wasn't all up to what they were making it seem to be. Um, I think that was the calm before the storm. I think that the next ten weeks are going to be crazy. Now um, we got everybody locked in. I, I guess I can see that. Yeah, and I think the main races that are going to be the most crazy are um, Dover, Talladega, and Phoenix. Those are the three races before they they eliminate people. You mean the final elimination? Yeah, before the, well, those are the three races. Dover is the eliminate final race before they knock down four people. Talladega, again, is the last race before they go down to eight, and then Phoenix is before they go down to the final four. Yeah, well, Loudon is, Loudon is like a crapshoot, so that's going to be tough for anybody to do anything at just because the truck is, the track is that tough. It just is. It's just flat. Um, it's an overgrown Martinsville. So, yeah, that, I can't see... I can see that being an exciting race, don't get me wrong. But I, I don't see that as being one of the peak races like what you're referring to right now. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I actually think that Loudon's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be a good race because if you think about it, let's say Matt Kenseth wins at Chicago and he's leading again and Brad Keselowski's behind him going, hey, if I win, I'm going to the next round. Yeah. They go into turn three on the final lap. He has a bumper. He's gonna be. He's gonna be like. Excuse me. I want to get to the next round. You already in. You've seen it before. Yep. Um, so now let's move on to the points championship, which I have a feeling Dave's gonna hate me for because uh, with this new chase standings of our own, things changed. Um, here's the winners for Richmond. The winning picks for Richmond. Kristen had Jeff Gordon for the win. Trooper had Kevin Harvick for the win. I had Kyle Larson for the win. I actually want to explain to you about my strategy for Kyle Larson. Dave had Greg Biffle for the win. Joe had Earnhardt for the win. And Art had Tony Stewart for the win. Before we show the results, I wanted to explain to you guys and you about my strategy for Kyle Larson. I looked at the standings before the Richmond race. I actually put everybody into their spots to see what, what it was going to look like. And I realized, and you'll find out in a second, 
that I was seated second with the most wins. Second most wins. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, going to Richmond, Larson was somebody I wanted to see in the chase, so I was going to swing for the fences, and that's exactly what I did. And then I saw you followed along with me by putting him second. So, well, I was, trying to, I was going with the guys that needed to do something to get in. Yeah. Or, or the ones that were closest to getting in that needed to do something to get in. Yeah. Yeah. And I really thought that uh, Greg Biffle, because he's had actually a pretty good run the last few races, you would have thought, you know, they were getting it together. and you know, But Roush has not been that impressive lately. I don't, I don't know what's up. But, uh, hey, you know, I'm not Jack Roush. <laughs> um, to look at these stand the results from Richmond now, Kristen got third place and the win, so she got 16 total points. Jo Trooper got zero. I got second place equaling eight. Dave got zero. Joe got fifth place equaling two, and Art got fourth place equaling four. <sighs> to look at these standings now, we're gonna. We're going to keep the overall standings running throughout the rest of the season because I just want to be able to say, man, if we didn't have the chase, Art got how many points? Um, to look at the overall standings before we get to the chase standings, Art is leading with 178 points. Joe's in second, 22 points back. Dave's in third, 24 points back. I'm in fourth, 29 points back. Trooper's in fifth, 55 points back. And Kristen's in sixth, 60 points back. Um, just as a little note for all you and you, um, that is probably going to be like the last week that I go over the overall stand. This is the last week that I'll go over the overall standings because we'll just go to the chase standings. Make sense? Yeah, at this point it wouldn't make any sense to keep repeating the overall standings. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe, maybe in the end you can do would have. Yeah, and that's what I plan to do. Yeah, because NASCAR is going to do that. You know, if it was the old way... But then again, what's the old way at this point in time? They've changed up so many times. What? Agreed. Um, I, it, me personally, I would go with the original, but it was no chase. If you were to put it together and look at it from the point of view from the old way with the points, sometimes it might not even, it might not even be a guy who was in the top 16. You never know. Yeah, agreed. I doubt that, but it could happen. Yep. So now to look at the chase standings and this is where Dave's gonna go what um art is leading I'm looking at the screen on your on your uh over your left is there something on there right now yeah but yeah I don't think you can see it because of the white I can see me but I can't see that okay well here's the standings now going through the chase Art is leading with 100 points. I am in second, eight, 20 points back. Kristen's in third, 40, 40 points back. Joe is in fourth, 60 points back. Trooper's in fifth, 80 points back. And here's where Dave's going to lose his mind. Dave is in sixth, 100 points back. What can you do? Um, you need to win more is what you need to do. No, I took some long shots this year. And the bottom line is, it's my own fault and where I'm at. So I can live with it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Plus, the I question your rules sometimes. But that's only because, you know, as I lose, I feel cheated. <laughs> I was cheated. Let's look at the final lap here real quick. Um, IndyCar is off until 2015. Formula One is off until the 21st of September. Global Rally Cross is off the 20th of September. The 2D United Sports Car Championship is off till the 20th of September. Um, and the trucks race Friday night, 8.30 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. The Nationwide Series races Saturday, 3.30 p.m. on ESPN 2. And the Cup Series races Sunday, 1.00 p.m. 31 no 1 p.m. on ESPN. Um, next weekend's show, uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in doing this, but we will be recording next week's show from NHMS on Sunday night. Um, so whether or not you want to tag along for that. I'm getting on... Wait, 
Okay, well, we'll have the table and everything there at the track, and because it'll just stay in the camper throughout the week, because during race weekend we'll have the table at the track. So, um, I'm in dire need of a restroom. Is there any way to pause? <laughs> well, we're almost done. So that's gonna do it for this week's show. Um, thanks to Dave for kind of cutting us short. Um, make sure to join us next weekend when we're live from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. To kick off race week that way. Hopefully he'll be with us. Um, if not, we'll miss him. Um, but make sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us all week on Facebook. Because we'll have sneak peeks for you. For come race week. So until we see each other then. Have a good night everybody. And goodbye. Bye everybody.